beautiful, well-trained collies in perfect harmony with their handlers. How did they get that way? Is a champion born or made, or is it a little of both? We believe it is both. In this film, we hope to show you how to achieve show ring success through good handling. A good handler shows a well-trained dog to best advantage, accentuating the dog's best virtues and minimizing the faults. Of course, we must start with a good collie. But without proper care and training, even a good dog cannot achieve the desired results. A show dog must be in good health to withstand the stress imposed upon him in the show ring. He must also be clean and well-groomed to be properly presented. We will concentrate on the training of both dog and handler to achieve the desired finished picture. We will cover several of the problems encountered with the dogs and in the show ring. On the way to a championship, many problems may arise. There are many methods of handling these problems. A good handler must first know the personality of the individual dog and then select the approach that works best. This is our raw material. Which of these cuddly pups will be the future show dog? Only time for their development and the effort you extend will determine this. The campaign trail is full of pitfalls. Many can be avoided by ensuring the health of the pups. Good nutrition is vital. It begins with the proper care of the dam. Freedom from both internal and external parasites is essential. Cleanliness is next to godliness applies to our four-footed friends as well. A safe place to play and obtain proper exercise is important to young, growing puppies. We cannot enough about personality development in nurturing the future show dog. This begins in the whelping box with gentle touching and handling, the first step in creating human trust. Playing radios and television promotes their acceptance of noise. Clapping can be added and usually results in barking puppies but it does prepare them for their future arena. Handling continues with the very early introduction of the grooming table. Gentle brushing and nail trimming, which does not have to be precise, introduces the puppy to the beginning aspects of show grooming. Constant patting and verbal reassurance is important at this stage. We like to start lead breaking by first introducing the puppy to a collar at about five weeks of age. This should be done under constant supervision and promptly removed after the training session. Next comes the leash, and usually some comic relief. Scratching and goose stepping, usually combined with the frequent use of reverse. In the beginning, follow the puppy and give praise and reward for steps taken in the right direction. Slight, gentle pressure on the leash may be used but bribery in the form of fruit, food and vocal encouragement are much preferred and generally bring better results. Never drag the puppy. Way to go. About three months of age, they usually have the basic idea. Now is the time to continue the leash work, but in different surroundings. Patience, repetition, and praise result in a confident, happy, easy to handle show dog. Now comes perhaps the most important single step in the training process, the teaching of a key word with the use of bait and praise. 
that instills in the dog the desire to use his ears and neck to his best potential. It must be fun. This keyword may be anyone that is comfortable for you to use, such as watch it, cookie, hear. We begin the process by using the keyword, throwing the bait on the ground, and showing the puppy where to find it. Before long, he gets into the spirit of the big game and begins finding the bait himself. Graduation from this exercise comes when the keyword alone achieves the desired response. Don't forget repetition and generous praise. As the puppy grows, maintain maintenance as well as show grooming should be done on the grooming table. This will give them the confidence on the table that they will need at the dog shows. The table is also useful as another method of teaching and reinforcing keyword and bait training. This type of training also discourages the habit some dogs have of creeping up on the handler. This too is a good time to accustom a dog to having his feet handled and placed. This posing is then transferred from the table to the ground. This will be of great benefit not only in showing the dog, but after that great win in stacking the dog for the photograph. The puppy match is a valuable tool for exposing the puppy to its first experience in actual show conditions. With all the new distractions, you may be in for a few surprises. This puppy seems to have learned her stand-stay lessons. Needs some work on the gating, though. This one needs some work on the stand-stay. But seems to have the gating down pat. The experience should be the reward, not the win. Make it fun, a totally pleasant experience. Not only in the ring, but the entire time. Adolescence is not only a stage of body, but of mind. It is a particularly sensitive time. Keyword bait training should be continued and refined. Continue the stacking, which should be readily accepted now by the dog. Rub the dog's body in conjunction with the stacking. This relieves tension and also simulates many judges' actions. Talk to the dog. Tell him how good and pretty he is. Next, add a surrogate judge. Always give generous praise. Practice skating set patterns such as the triangle, the L, the circle, and up and back.
Familiarity through repetition should produce a happy moving dog working on a loose leash because he knows what you expect. Next, we will go into handler techniques that can help a dog be shown to his best advantage. No collie looks his best with his nose pointing skyward. Flying ears are unattractive. This head position gives the illusion of too much depth. Lower the bait to put the head at the correct angle. White haws and blue eyes are can be very distracting. Therefore, whenever possible, such as the return from gating, position the dog with its best side toward the judge. Lack of finish of underjaw can best be minimized by pulling up on the leash dropping and angling the head toward the judge. Turtling can be a particularly annoying habit, which takes away from the dog's neck and outline. There are several ways of trying to correct this problem. Use of the leash as a tool to get the dog to use his neck is one method. Also, throwing the bait behind the dog or playing catch can break this habit. Additionally, use of the knee into the chin may be needed or a combination of any or all of the above. If an incorrect front is the problem, don't advertise it. Change the dog's position. In gating a front problem, the same adage holds true. Make the return at a slight angle away from the judge. Crabbing, when not structural, is generally just a bad habit. However, at certain stages of growth, this habit may appear in relation to body length. To correct this habit, practice gating by a curb or wall and also find the right speed. The use of angles in gating can be in a positive manner. When a dog has no gating faults, but excels in one area, maneuver the pattern to extend the line of gating at which your dog excels. Which this handler is demonstrating on the second triangle. Top line can be an obvious fault in a smooth. Pushing up on the abdomen can temporarily correct this. Top line in a rough can either be structural or coat created. Groom down the rump hair. The mid back hair is groomed forward and the long hair is parted and laid down over the shoulder. Although the collie is supposed to be a free stacking animal, this is not always possible. Adjusting a poorly placed rear prior to examination makes a better picture. Here is classic proof of the value of training.
a magnificent collie standing tall and sure, hand stacked for that best of breed picture. Oh, so easy. Oh, so pretty. That's a take. Ah, yes, here comes Mrs. Wrongway. Not listening to the judge's instructions. Not watching where she is going. An accident waiting to happen. Oops, where did that come from? Mrs. Rightway watches the judge's procedure before entering the ring. She also does her final touch-up grooming at this time. Confident and prepared, she enters the ring. Having watched the judge's pattern in advance, she can easily follow instructions. In the ring, when coming back from gating, never run up on the judge. Always stop a few feet back so that the judge will get the full impact. Expression is a most important part of the collie. Don't block it with your body. Stand back. Courtesy in the ring is important. When an unthinking exhibitor in front of you blocks your dog, move. Either in front of or behind the Fending exhibitor and dog. Change of position in this circumstance can be an obvious message to the judge. Courtesy is just as important from the exhibitor in the rear. Crowding is a very distracting for the fellow exhibitor and frightening to the dog in front. If someone from the rear is blocking your dog, move forward. When it's no longer possible, demand your space. Crowding the dog in front of yours while gating not only detracts from the competitor's dog, but definitely throws off your own. Back off. Give the dog in front of yours some space and do your own dog a big favor. Say hello to Miss Fanny Fashion. Dress to the teeth and then some. There's no denying she won't be overlooked even in a large class. Long, thick brown leash she uses. Wouldn't white or blue and thin be better? Observe the lovely high heels. All the better to trip on. and blouse definitely color coordinated to make you forget the dog.
Her exaggerated arm motions must give the poor dog Excedrin headache number 15. Proper show ring attire begins with light weight color compatible leash for the dog. Low heel comfortable shoes aid smooth gating. Proper handler attire is never so colorful as to distract from the dog. The skirt full enough to run in, but never so full as to cause interference. Remember this cuddly five gold model? Here she is at 19 months of age. A champion. If even one of the ideas in this film makes this dream come true for you, our time will have been well spent.